Hi, welcome to this uh, e-lecture on uh, timer peripherals. Okay, so in this uh, lecture, we are going to be looking at the timer modules of the uh, Cortex M0 Plus on the Freedom Board. And uh, this is uh, important for us because uh, the timer modules uh, help us to keep track of regular events or periodic events. At the same time, um, it plays an important uh, role in generating the PWM signals that we need uh, in order to control our motors. Okay, so uh, let's get started. So the KL25 uh, board, okay, uh, sorry, the micro microcontroller has a few timer peripherals. Okay, so first, first one is the periodic interrupt timer. Okay, so that can be used to generate uh, interrupts at regular intervals, for example, every one microsecond, every uh, one millisecond, and so on. Okay, so that is uh, one way in which you can use this uh, PIT module. The other is the normal uh, timer or PWM module, which you can use for input capture, output compare, or PWM mode. Uh, it has a few other operations as well, such as low power timer, uh, real time clock, as well as a stick. Uh, but we are not going to go into all of these modes, you know, uh, in these lecture slides. We are just going to be focused on the uh, PWM module mostly, because that is what we need, you know, uh, for our uh, mini project. Okay. So let's start with a basic introduction to the timer counter peripheral module. Uh, from what we already have studied before uh, with Arduino Uno, okay, we know that in general, a timer is a common peripheral block that uh, most microcontrollers have. And basically how it works is you have some value that you can load into the counter. So that is what we call the uh, reload value or the preset value. And once I load it with a value, okay, so for example, I can load up, uh, load it with the initial value of maybe 0x0000. And subsequently, I can uh, make this timer or counter increment. And it can increment periodically through a clock. Okay, that is one way. Or it can also increment uh, in a non periodic manner if I am clocking this counter through an external uh, pulse. Okay, so the input here that actually clocks this counter can be a clock or could be external events. And in terms of clock, uh, we, we can say that the counter would increment periodically. Okay, uh, 0001 and 0002 every uh, fixed interval of time. Okay. Uh, but for events, it could be an event where, or, or the use case could be where you have an external device that is uh, sending pulses and you want to count how many pulses are received. Okay, uh, one example could be, for example, I have a sensor, uh, an IR sensor and an IR receiver. Okay, so this is a transmitter and this is a receiver. And uh, basically, uh, whenever somebody walks through or some device passes through, the line of sight is broken. So maybe I would generate a pulse like this. Okay, whenever an object passes through and breaks this line of sight. So this could be used as a trigger point, either the negative edge or positive edge, whichever way I configure it, to increment uh, this counter. Okay, so there are generally uh, two ways in which you can use a timer counter uh, peripheral block. Either periodically you keep changing it or you use an external trigger to count events okay and of course um, we always have this interrupt capability where if my timer reaches a particular value okay I can generate interrupt uh, in most cases you can do it for overflow or underflow situation so for example if I start at zero okay uh, and I call all the way to FF FF okay in the next clock cycle I would reload I would uh, reset back to 0000. In that situation, I can configure the timer block to generate an interrupt. Okay. Uh, sometimes it doesn't have to go all the way to the end. You can also have an in intermediate value. So when I reach some preset value, I'm also able to reset back and still generate an interrupt. Okay. So these are common features that most timer blocks have. And uh, another thing is also, of course, I don't necessarily have to start from zero, I can also have another uh, reload uh, uh, trigger point where the reload value 
could be something else okay so i don't have to start from zero i can have a register where i can say the start value is always maybe 10 or 20 or something else and whenever i generate the interrupt the new uh, reload value would be this value that i put in a particular register okay so these are also another this is also another common feature that uh, timer counter blocks have and uh, when i want to use the output of the timer uh, i can use it directly okay that means i read from here okay or in some cases i may go through what we call a prescaler so a prescaler is generally used to further divide down the frequency of the counter uh, value okay so if i feel that the counter is incrementing too quickly you know and i want to slow it down i can actually pass it through a prescaler so that i take a, a a slower clock update okay so this this is just to give you an overview of how timer or counter blocks are generally designed in most microcontrollers okay so let's look at uh, our cortex m0 uh, uh, microcontroller in particular so the first one we're going to look at is the periodic interrupt timer capability so how this works is basically you can write a preset value to this register which is basically a timer start value and what will happen is the moment i enable the timer it starts to count down so you can see it starts to count down until it hits zero okay and once it hits zero it reloads and at the point where it reloads an interrupt is generated okay so this is a uh, a way in which I can have periodic interrupts so of course the period or how long it takes from the time I count down so for example if I start from 1000 and I go all the way to zero when I reload back I generate the interrupt so I need to know how much is the time duration that it takes okay and this time duration is of course very much related to the clocking frequency okay, how frequently how, how quick uh, what is the frequency at which I clock this uh, counter okay and uh, as i mentioned earlier it could be directly from a particular clock source or it could go through some prescaler so i need to look at those settings to know uh, what how much time i actually take to count down from a particular preset value all the way down to zero and then trigger the interrupt at the next next clock cycle okay so this is uh, how a periodic interrupt timer works and this is uh, useful okay in situations where uh, for example, every uh, few microseconds or milliseconds, you want to do some update on the LCD panel, you want to check or you want to uh, do a saving of data to the SD card or something like that. Okay, so whenever you have a system where you need to have uh, periodic uh, updates, okay, so this is one way or one peripheral that can help you do that and this periodic interrupt timer. Okay, so I'm not going to go too much into this. Uh, if you think you want to use this for your project, uh, you can uh, use it. Okay, but you need to go and look back at the data sheet. Okay, to sort of figure out how to configure it and use it. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump straight to the PWM module because this is uh, important and uh, like I said, it's critical because we're going to use this for the motor control functionalities uh, for our project. Okay, so this is the timer PWM module. Okay, and uh, basically you have uh, uh, this. This is high level overview. This block here, you have two ex uh, clocking options uh, similar to the uh, general overview that we saw just now. One is external, the other is internal. Okay, in terms of clocking op options, and you also have the prescaler. Okay, to divide the clock up by one all the way to one to eight. And you have a 16-bit counter over here. So this 16-bit counter can be configured to count up or down. And it can also be uh, set to reload with a particular value. Okay. Uh, whenever it goes to overflow or underflow condition. Okay. And there are three main modes of operation. Uh, the first one is the call the capture mode. Okay. That means I'm trying to capture the moment. Uh, an input signal sort of changes okay so that is the capture mode the other is uh, output compare mode where i say that i change the output signal whenever the timer reaches a certain value okay so the timer will be counting and when i reach a preset value so for example maybe every time i hit 0x a 000 okay 
I will change the output signal. Okay, so that is uh, output compare mode. And uh, the other one is the PWM mode, okay, where I generate a PWM signal, uh, which is basically very much used to sort of give us an equivalent analog voltage. Okay, so if you recall your Arduino uh, Uno, basically we use the analog write function. Okay, so in Arduino Uno, we use the analog write function, which will give us an equivalent analog value. And that is actually through the configuration of a PWM signal. Okay, um, so here we are going to be looking at how we can actually generate a PWM signal by uh, setting and manipulating the registers associated with the timer module. Okay, and at the same time, uh, we can also generate interrupts, okay? Or DMA requests or hardware triggers whenever we have an overflow. Okay, so uh, that gives us a, a overview of the timer PWM module. Now let's look at the configuration. So the first thing, uh, there are a few registers. Okay, uh, the C mode register basically tells us the clock. Okay, whether we're going to use an internal clock or external clock. So that is over here, based on this register setting. Okay, uh, again, you need to look back at the data sheet. Okay, to understand all these register settings uh, and of course I will go through again uh, as I review the lab manual uh, in the next video so uh, look out for that video as well but now I'm just going to give you a high level uh, overview of the registers the prescaler uh, like I said is in the event where you feel that the clock that is used to currently uh, increment the counter module is too fast and you want to slow it down you have a set of prescale values okay where you can configure some bits to decide which prescale value you want and uh, this counter okay, this module counter can count up or down depending on the bit setting which is cpwms uh, bit okay where you decide whether you want the counter to count up or count down okay then there is this uh, mod register this mod register is basically the value to which you count to okay so if i'm counting uh, up okay uh, once I reach the mod value, I will go back to zero. Okay, so I count from zero all the way to this mod value. Okay, and then I go back to zero and start again. Okay, uh, if I were to do both up and down counting, what I will do is I will go to, I will go from zero all the way to mod. Okay, and from there I will come back down to zero again and then go up again. And at this point of time, as you can see, mod minus one. Is where that means after I reach mod the next the next cycle here okay is where I can use to generate an interrupt okay so every time I reach the top and I go one uh, plus that value I can generate uh, interrupts okay so one beyond the mod value okay so this is uh, generally how this timer block can be initially configured uh, in terms of the prescale like I mentioned you have three bits here okay uh, in the register to select the prescale value okay and uh, you can select any value depending on how you want the the frequency at which you want the counter to be updated okay and uh, there is of course a timer overflow flag bit that is set to one okay whenever the counter goes one beyond the mod value okay and if i've enabled the interrupt okay i will jump to the interrupt service routine okay uh, so again, the, uh, as you recall our interrupt uh, lecture, uh, once interrupts are configured correctly, when the event happens, you will automatically jump to the interrupt. Okay, and from there you proceed to do whatever you need to do and then you return from the interrupt and carry on your main program. Okay, so these are the two operations, count up and count up, count down. Okay, if I'm going to count up, basically I will start from zero, okay, and I will count up okay all the way till I reach the mod value in this case mod of 4 and once I overflow okay 1 plus the mod value I will be generating the uh, or setting the time overflow bit flag here okay so you can see that whenever I reach the top okay at the next clock cycle is where I will set the time overflow bit and when this is set okay if the interrupt is also has been enabled, uh, the appropriate interrupt has been enabled, then I would have jumped to the interrupt service routine. Okay, so that is the uh, important thing we must understand uh, how we are going to use this flag bit. Okay, uh, 
and in the count up and down mode basically what you're doing is the counter is basically counting up and counting down at the same time so basically uh, when i reach the top the mod flag for uh, one plus eight okay i will be counting down and at that time is where i also set the time overflow bit okay so this is uh, how you can sort of configure it so both of them uh, can be used okay uh, to generate uh, the appropriate peer, uh, interrupts okay it's just a matter of whether you want to use up counting or both up counting and down counting mode okay uh, these are the configuration registers okay uh, in our case what we probably be looking at is uh, whether you want to reload on the trigger point or do you want to stop on the overflow and things like that okay and uh, we will be going through these registers again uh, in the lab okay so in the lab video i will be explaining more in detail about these registers so that you understand how to uh, do the lab and uh, for the overflow and the events basically this is flag will be set whenever the overflow has occurred and uh, these flags will be set whenever an appropriate event has occurred so this event uh, if you recall there are three types of events the capture uh, compare and the pwm so it depends on the mode of operation when that particular event that is configured for has happened that flag will also be set okay now these are the modes just now the input capture the output compare and the pwm the input capture is used okay whenever i want the to capture the timer's value when the input signal change okay so sometimes you are waiting for some device to generate a particular event either a rising edge or a falling edge or something and what happens is the moment i capture this event I, or the moment this event is is triggered i will be able to capture the timer's value okay if i put it in the input capture mode the other one is the output compare mode where once the timer reach a particular value then i modify a signal okay so i could say that every uh, periodic interval i want to toggle the pin or set it or clear it then i can use this output compare mode okay uh, similar to the periodic interrupt timer uh, but in the periodic interrupt timer mode basically you can go to the interrupt service routine and then you can do it in this case you can sort of configure the uh, timer block itself to do it automatically whenever this timing uh, criteria has been met okay uh, the last one is this uh, pwm basically we want to generate pwm signals based on a particular duty cycle uh, and, and period okay right now uh, the next register is this channel configuration and value okay so uh, this uh, uh, channel flag is the flag that will be set whenever the particular event occurs like i said the event could be a capture uh, output compare or a pwm and if i want in it to generate interrupts i must enable this bit okay uh, these two set of uh, uh, bits msb msa and elsb lsa are basically used uh, according to the mode of operation okay so if i'm using it for either capture or compare or pwm i need to make sure I need I configure them in the correct uh, bit settings and this register here is the TPM CNV CNV is basically the counter value the end can be counter 0 counter 1 and so on okay so this CNV register is basically what we used to compare with whenever we want to decide if I should generate an interrupt or should overflow or anything like that okay right now okay what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the PWM okay uh, because that is what we are focusing on so the pwm uh, i will not go through the details we already know that uh, basically what it does is it helps us to generate an equivalent analog voltage so in this case if my pwm uh, duty cycle is 10 percent that means i will generate a 10 percent uh, equivalent analog value if it's 50 percent it would be halfway and it's 90 percent means it's uh, very much close to the uh, maximum value okay so the PWM is equivalent to an analog, right? Okay, where an equivalent analog voltage is actually uh, supplied to the output device uh, depending on the duty cycle of the PWM. Okay, so this is basically how a PWM signal looks like. 
and how do we relate it back to the uh, registers and the behavior just now so there's two things one is uh, counter overflow as well as channel match okay so the counter overflow as you can see is what maps to the period here okay so the mod value the mod value is basically tells me the full uh, number of cycles that I will count for one full period and the CNV value okay is the value that will determine the pulse width okay so that will determine the pulse width and you can just imagine that if I want a 50% duty cycle then the CNV value okay would be equals to mod by 2 correct that will give me a 50% uh, duty cycle okay uh, that is something that you can see from both of this information here okay and uh, these two registers is basically to decide whether I want high true pulses or low true pulses what it basically means is if I look at this uh, high true pulses means while uh, I am counting up it is high okay and then it switches low if I were to uh, want it the other way around that means the same settings but I generate a signal that looks like this okay then I would basically have to toggle my EL, S, N, B and N, A bits from 1, 0 to X1 over here okay so what you will do is basically you are toggling the 1s and zeros, okay uh, from high true pulses to low true pulses okay? so that is how these bits will be used okay in our configuration uh, th okay so this uh, earlier slide here this is for the count up mode here so in this case I'm counting up okay and whenever it overflows I'll reset back to zero uh, in this situation is where I'm doing both the count up and count down mode okay so basically what is happening is as you can see down here when my counter is counting down and there is a match so you can imagine that my counter is counting down here okay and at that point of time where there is a match the output will be set to high and here my counter is zero and it's counting up okay and when it's counting up and there is a match okay the output is now cleared to zero okay so Whenever it's a down counting, okay, and there's a match, the output is toggle high. And when it's up counting and it's a match, the output is toggle low. Okay, so again, if I want to invert this behavior, I can just play around with the ELSNB and ELSNA bits. Okay, so in uh, this set of slides, basically what we have seen is the way in which uh, we can use the timer module. Okay, like I said, we have the periodic interrupt timer okay or we can use it in capture mode compare mode or pwm mode okay and i've sort of given you a, a rough overview of the registers okay uh, in the lab you're going to explore a lot more on each of the registers and what they are being used for okay and that is important so that you understand how to uh, manipulate any of these bits in the registers if i want to change any of the settings okay so I'll be creating another video shortly to explain the lab manual and what you need to do. Okay, uh, so hopefully that gives you a better idea on uh, how to use the PWM module uh, for our lab as well as in our project. Okay, so thank you very much. Okay, so this last slide here is just to give you an idea of how the microcontroller can be used to uh, connect or uh, connect to a motor. So in this case, we have a servo motor. Okay, so if I want this, for example, these kind of settings, okay, so you know that I need to set my registers such that I generate a 20 millisecond period and I need to have a 1 to 2 millisecond pulse width means then that will be my uh, CNV. So this is basically my mod register and this would be basically my CNV register. Okay, so by, and of course, this timing that I want I need to look back at what is the clocking frequency and whether I need to look at uh, need prescalers. Okay, so all of those will be the initial setting to make sure that the, the mod value that I use is able to give me the appropriate period value. And subsequently, with that, I also can decide the CNV value that will decide the pulse width. Okay, so this is just to give you an idea of how I can use PWMs. So of course, it's not only servo motors, you can use it for our DC motors as well, like what we are going to be using for our project. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Okay, so that uh, brings us to the end of this first set of slides on the timers. Okay, 
uh, I will be then releasing a video shortly on the lab okay and uh, what to look out for in the lab uh, so please look out for that video as well okay thank you